Two. Two. Okay, we're going to change. This is a new Kansai Special DFB 1404 PMD. And we're going to change it from a quarter gauge, quarter, 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 which is three quarter overall. And we're going to change it into a quarter inch quarter, which is inch and a half overall. So the first thing we're going to do, we have to remove all the covers and shields and gauge parts. So that's what we're going to do now, remove all the covers and gauge parts. Yeah. Okay. Cut this thread. Tie this off so you can pull it through later. And your looping thread. Pretty sharp, don't okay. Three millimeters. Remove your presser foot, three millimeter. Okay. Remove your needles, one point five millimeter Allen wrench. Okay, let's take off the cloth plate. Okay. Now we're going to remove the adapter plate, which is the throw plate. The throw plate sits on the adapter plate. We're just going to take the adapter plate right off. adapter plate you'll have to angle it out make sure your puller is up it should angle right out of the back here there it is and we will eventually we're going to put this throw plate remove the four screws and we'll put that throw plate on the adapter plate okay but we'll continue here we got to remove the needle clamp or the chuck, and we need probably a two millimeter Allen wrench. And this middle screw here is on a, a flat spot. It could be very tight sometimes, so be careful. It's a small screw, but it could be very tight, so you might you don't want to strip it out. If it's real tight, you could just tap on the clamp a little. If this was real tight here, you could just take a little hammer. As you're loosening, you tap on it a little, and it should crack loose. Okay, and you see the flat spot or the dimple that the screw goes into. There's your needle clamp. Okay, now we move our feed dog. Actually, I'm going to get this. This is the metering device here. I'm going to get this little guide here out of our way. Three millimeter also. Okay. 
This will be in your way when you're setting the loopers and spreaders, so just you might as well get it out of your way. Okay, now you can see to get out your feed dog, we drop the loopers. You pull on this shaft right here, and your loopers drop down, and now we can get it out with feed dog screw. Remove the feed dog. And then these are the spreaders. We're going to remove our spreaders now. These are the spreaders, so they're called retainer loopers or spreaders. And we have to remove them, 1.5 millimeter Allen screws. You'll take these screws all the way out because that shaft has to come out. That's oop. That spreader bar has to come out, so take the screws all the way out. Okay, and then you'll need a two and a half millimeter. I believe it's two and a half. Or is it two? Two. No, this one's two also. Okay, two millimeter. Loosen the loosen the spreader bar itself. Loosen the spreader bar itself. Then remove your spreaders, which we will use again, and slide your spreader bar out. Now we have to remove our loopers. Loopers, needle guards, and looper holder will have to come off. The last three things we gotta do. Looper, so I'm gonna loosen my loopers. Okay. Pull them out. Some of the room there. This one's in there a little tighter, but if I was to loosen the needle guard, it would get looser. But sometimes they're a little snug. You just wiggle it out of there. Or if you want it, you could drop it down and loosen your needle guard screw first. When you set the needle guards, the loop sometimes the looper does get a little tight. While I'm here, I'll just loosen all these needle guard screws. Now that should come out easier. It's still a little tight. Okay. We'll have to remove these loopers. These are the screws that hold your looper. We'll have to put them in the other looper holder. So I'm just loosening them up. Almost all the way out, but not quite. And I'm going to remove your looper rocker. Okay, these screws are in there fairly tight usually. And I don't want to mess them up, so I'll just tap on my screwdriver a little bit. And that was in there pretty tight. pretty good okay now to get these out you'll have to loosen up your looper rock or drop it down with the shaft like we did before loopers up loopers down leave it in between so I can get my finger the nut is in the back here so I'm gonna sort of have my finger on that nut while I take this screw out So I have the looper holder in between positions right now. It's not, it's not all the way up. It's not locked into the up position. So I can move it a little bit. All right. Take that screw out. Move my finger over to the other screw, the other nut. If it was all the way in the locked position, the looper holder was back all the way, I would not be able to fit my finger and hold the nut. Then it would fall into the machine. Okay, now your looper holder is completely off. The two nuts are still sitting in your looper rocker. We call this the looper rocker. Okay. Now I'm just going to continue 
get my looper screws out of here all the way. these. These are the screws that hold your looper. So I'm going to go ahead and screw these in. Now this looper holder is made of aluminum. So you never want to force anything too hard. It'll strip out. They, they should go in nice and easy, nice and free. If it feels tight at all, don't. Stop doing it. Reset it. Like I said, these are aluminum and you can strip them fairly easily if you cross thread. You cross thread them, you'll strip them out. Okay, now if you want to make your life real easy, you put these two in the vise and you move your needle guards right over from one to the other. You do not have to tighten down too hard on this. It's nice and easy. And we'll just take one off at a time and move it right over. Same thing, these are made of aluminum, so it should take very easily. If you feel any tightness at all, back off on that screw, try it again. We're leaving them loose right now. We're not tightening anything. Now, we have our new looper holder with the guards in. Needle guards are in. They're loose. And now we're going to put the looper holder back in the machine. Okay, here's looper rocker. We have our nuts still. Now our nuts are still on the back of these slots. The looper rocker has slots in it for the nuts. So again, we're gonna push back and hold that with our finger. Hold that nut with our finger. We're gonna put that looper holder right back on. I'm gonna look through here, make sure we're lined up. And we'll attach the one screw. finger on that other nut. All right, we didn't drop the nuts. You'll drop those nuts usually. Those nuts might fall out, but no big deal. You just get them out, put them back in. All right. Okay, I'm not going to tighten these all the way yet because we still have to set this looper. All right, I'm, I am going to snap it back in place. So now that's back in place. And you see this looper rocker has elongated holes in it. So you can move your looper rocker back and forth. So we'll have to set that. Okay. Now we're at a point where we can start timing the machine, putting the rest of the parts on there and time it. Okay, now we're going to talk about one of the biggest problems. We're going to do a little troubleshooting right before we time the machine. We're going to do a little troubleshooting. One of the adjustments when you do the timing is your looper distance. So we have our looper shaft, looper rocker shaft. Now when you set your looper distance, 
you have to go inside this cover here this reservoir cover that i'm taking off now that i'm removing now inside here is where you want to make your looper rocker front to back adjustment a lot of mechanics make a mistake of trying to make this adjustment from this looper stopper here this is called your looper rocker stopper the aluminum feed looper rocker looper rocker stopper and then we have a spring there a lot of mechanics this is the biggest problem i see in factories is that there'll be play there'll be left to right play in your looper rocker so if you loosen this even if you don't loosen it all the way if you just loosen it a little bit and try to tap on this to move it back or move it forward okay this looper rocker tends to slide out on you a little bit and then you'll have play and if there's any left to right play in this looper rocker you're going to skip any left to right play at all so so don't lose this screw right don't loosen that screw never right you basically never adjust your looper distance from that screw you want to go in here seven millimeter hexagon screw that we can loosen which i'm going to do right now and we don't have to worry do it uh, here no? yeah you have to go around the back. okay i'm going to get my wrench on there we're going to loosen it and now when i loosen it you see the whole shaft is moving back and forth okay and i will not lose any of my left to right adjustment if you loosen it from here your spring's going to slip out your stopper and your spring's going to slip out on you anytime you move this looper front you want to make front to back anytime you adjust this looper rocker front to back you go inside under this reservoir cover and move it from there and that is also connected to your looper eccentric which we'll talk about the looper avoid eccentric as we go through the timing of the machine uh, that's your looper avoid eccentric right there looper avoid eccentric mm -hmm. okay